Our current way to describe a microscopic world is by using quantum mechanics. The implications we studied on the Schrodinger equations and the fundamental equations for the wrong no relativistic version of quantum mechanics. Particles are neither created nor destroyed in this version. Quantum mechanics applies to this particles, the relativistic version of quantum mechanics, called quantum field theory, or QFT for short. QFT is well suited to let us calculate probabilities of creation and annihilation of particles in interactions. QFT is used to study the scattering decay of vacuum fluctuations, but seldom to study bound states, which quantum mechanics handles as well. To use quantum field theory to predict behavior of fundamental particles, we need to understand interactions or forces between the particles. Mathematical models are used to see these interactions and the known forces are electromagnetic forces, the strong force, the weak force and the gravitational force. Fundamental or elementary particles are those that as far as current experiments can tell have no substructure. Of course, there are always theories and hypotheses of string theory and small balls that make up other matter, but these are the furthest we've ever discovered. This is the definite model of the universe which we understand. These are the quarks, leptons, and the force carriers known as gauge bosons. In the quarks, we have six quarks. We have the up, charm, and top. And then below, we have the down, strange, and bottom. Similarly, on the leptons, we have six leptons. On the top, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. On the bottom, the electron, the muon, and the tau. Then, we have something that I'm going to cover more in full today, the gauge bosons. We have the photon, the Z boson, the W boson, and then the gluon. And also, on the other side, there is the theorized graviton and Higgs boson, but they haven't been completely assured to have been discovered. Now to the force carriers. In quantum field theory, forces are transmitted by particles, and fields are associated with particles which transmit forces. The particles of electromagnetic fields are photons. In quantum electrodynamics, all electromagnetic fields are associated with photons, an interaction between the charged particles occur when one charged particle emits a virtual photon and is then absorbed by another particle. The photon has to be a virtual photon because the emission of the real photon would violate energy momentum conservation, where no energy can be created or destroyed. If, if for, for example, an electron initially is at rest, emitted a photon, the final state would consist of an electron and a photon moving off in opposite directions, a configuration which is necessarily has more energy initial than the rest electron. But uncertainty principle prevents a contradiction. The uncertainty relation, the change in E, the change in T equals H, tells us that if we observe a system for a time and the interval for the change in T, then we can't know the energy system better without the energy uncertainty, so the change in E. So the photon can have energy for a time interval without anybody being able to know if the conservation is violated. As long as the photon is reabsorbed quickly enough, there is no measurable violation of energy conservation. Since the photon must be reabsorbed, it cannot be detected. It is a virtual photon. Particle physicists now believe they can describe the behavior of all known subatomic particles with a single theoretical framework called the Standard Model. This model incorporates the quarks and leptons as well as their interactions through strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces. The Standard Model puts field theories QED and QCD under one umbrella. Gravity remains outside the Standard Model. According to the standard model, the basic formula is transmitted between quarks, leptons, the third family of particles. These are called gauge bosons, as I've already talked about. The extent we can perform calculations necessary to predict more than the experiments necessary to test these predictions, the standard model passed every test. The standard model contains parameters whose origins and values no one will be able to understand more deeply. In this way, the standard model 
has set a firm platform from which searches for new physics can be launched. Standard model is not really a theory of both electroweak and strong forces as much as it is in a way to bring these two theories together under a single umbrella. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.